State legislators are starting their search for answers on why XL energy bills are so high. Today's first meeting of a special committee on the issue was really just an appetizer before what could be quite the spicy dish next week when Excel has to come in and answer questions directly. Our Marshall Zellinger is at the Capitol and Marshall seems like legislators are just kind of getting up to speed with what you've taught all of us about this issue over the last month. This would have been a lot easier if the lawmakers had just watched the 17 stories we covered. Instead, it was just kind of a primer on the state regulators and the people who defend us uh, in front of those state regulators. This meeting today was the first of that committee, that utility rising utility rates committee. Uh, the first people to speak were from the Public Utilities Commission, the, the PUC that regulates uh, on behalf of the state. And one of the questions that was asked is something that several of you have emailed me about. Why can't companies like Excel buy gas and store it when it's cheaper and then not have to buy it when it gets more expensive? Is there something that the PUC needs to be able to allow utilities to essentially contract for more gas when it's at a low price? Gas is somewhat storable, unlike electricity, which is very hard, very hard to store, but we don't have huge um, storage reserves in the state of Colorado. Some utilities have more than others, but there's a limit to the amount that a, that a company can purchase and put in storage. So while gas prices are very low right now, there isn't enough storage to sort of put it in the ground now and wait and use it until next winter, there's not that physically that much storage. The Office of Utility Advocate went second. They're the public defender for us in front of the PUC. And there was a lot of discussion about what I covered in story eight, that $2 million in outside legal fees for Excel that got passed on to the customers of Excel. The conversation was about why is that allowed and what was discovered by the lawmakers, had they watched the story earlier, they would have learned this, uh, about all the things that Excel customers pay that essentially fund all of the operations from state regulators to Excel lawyers. Ratepayers pay for the fixed utility fund. So this is the operations of our office as well as the Public Utilities Commission. They pay for the company's in-house counsel, they pay for the company's in-house employees, they pay for the company's outside counsel, they pay for the company's outside experts. Since our coverage at the end of January, the Office of Utility Advocate said there have been 600, more than 600 complaints to their office. A lot of the complaints are about things we've talked about, rising winter gas bills, uh, the, the solar interconnections and the lack of people who have solar panels on their home getting connected to the grid and even trouble talking to customer service with some of these utility companies. Kyle, it's next week's meeting that I'm most interested in. Of course, it's the day of our mayoral debate, so I'm going to have to be quick in and out, but it's when Excel and other utility companies have to testify in front of the lawmakers. Marshall Zellinger bravely fighting through technical difficulties by reporting live tonight from a 2004 flip phone. Marshall, thank you.